Well hello everyone, welcome back to yet another one of my Outlander videos and my review of episode 10 of season 3. Now I'm gonna start off by apologizing for my review being delayed, I usually upload these on Sundays, however I had an emergency that had me unable to upload this on time, but my guess is better late than never. So by my count we've got 10 episodes down and 3 to go, yes the end is near and then it's probably another long wait up until season 4 comes to our screens. I know, very irritating stuff right there, but at least once the season is over I'm gonna be bringing you the occasional Outlander news video, season 4 updates and all that good stuff, and hopefully that's gonna keep you company. Now I am also open to suggestions on series you would like for me to review on the channel over the course of the upcoming period, you can make recommendations in the comments to my Outlander videos or contact me on Facebook or on Twitter. I'm always open to these kind of suggestions and if I watch it and you suggest it, I'm probably gonna end up reviewing it. But anyway, this was yet another good episode on a pretty good season. But just so I don't waste much time, let me get down to my list of top moments in comments on this episode. Number 1. So we start off with the newest separation in Claire and Jamie's life after she's boarded the porpoise on last week's episode, only to realize they decided to move with her on board, regardless of their deal with her. This time around though, we're presented with the events from Jamie's perspective on board of the Artemis. Now I've generally been opposed to some of Claire's actions and reactions over the past few weeks, and there's nothing against the woman or women in general, nothing really sexist about all of these comments that I've made over the past few weeks. There is rather the fact that for such a smart woman, such an intelligent woman, she never really realizes that she has to act differently given she's living in different times. There is also the fact that she never stops while she's still ahead, she's just got this innate need to keep pushing and pushing with every single situation until it becomes a total mess. And because of the fact that you'd usually think that Claire is the one who brings balance to this relationship, you'd appreciate how Jamie knew when to stop there, when it was that he was outnumbered. There's really no good reason to die under the premise of wanting to save her or reunite with her because that is gonna achieve nothing. Funny enough though, while I sit here complaining about Claire's rushing into every single situation and raving about Jamie's reaction there, I for one am not sure how I'd react in a situation just like that one. Number 2 though, now one thing that I've been wanting to comment on over the past few episodes is the show's persistence on focusing on Dr. Claire Fraser. That has been pretty much the ordeal from the moment she got her degree and all the way up until now. Now I do understand how the books portrayed her and how the show wants to pull this we are feminists act, but I just hope whoever is giving those scenes with her repeating the name of a disease or infection a zillion times, too much screen time, realizes there are a lot of amazing successful female doctors in our world today and I hope they do realize as well that they have already established she's a good doctor, there's no need to convince us because this is not literally the good doctor, which is an amazing show by the way. It's not Fraser's Anatomy either. So what I'm simply trying to say here is there are a lot of minutes lost over the course of so many episodes that could have been or could still be used to explore other arcs in more depth. But of course there is always the upside, the entertaining and fun part to watch in Claire playing Doctor. And in this case it was a carrier of the disease who doesn't show illness. That is probably one of the hardest things to explain in a time where medicine has not advanced to its 20th century levels, like for all of those people who were standing there during that scene, even those who supported her, you're either sick or you're not. However, another straight comment here is all about Claire needing to explain things with a less condescending tone. Number 3. So we've got Jamie planning a mutiny on board of the Artemis and trying to get Fergus to help him start it. Now that is the kind of thing that I think is fun, actual planning beyond the initial moment and the initial impulse. Now I did like the psychological game that went on there with Jamie trying to play Fergus, talking about his knowledge of what real love is, making a bargain, the keys to his cell, in return for him blessing his marriage to Marsily. Very under the belt of Jamie if you ask me, yet extremely well played. But on the subject of Fergus and Marsily, let's talk number 4. I did tell you this on last week's review, but Marsily with all her annoying of Claire is yet another Claire, an extremely stubborn woman with a mind of her own. Now I do like her character a lot, except I did dislike her reaction trying to convince Fergus not to help Jamie move forward with his plan. 
Now I do realize that so far her younger sister is pretty hung up on Jamie being a father to them. I don't remember Marcelli expressing any clear emotions on that front. But nonetheless, I would have expected she cared the least bit about the man who has been acting like a father to them for a while now. And that would also be the very man who is willing to secure their future by paying alimony instead of sending their mother to prison for what she did. What I did like though was how much Fergus seems to have so much respect for Jamie. It was pretty decent of him, refusing to jump in bed with Marcelli, even when she threw herself at him just because he promised Jamie he won't. Number 5 though, Fergus proves he really loves Marcelli. So the young man was about to steal the keys and free Jamie and get on board with his plan. His realization though that the crew would have them both thrown overboard, his fear of being party to Jamie's death and of leaving Marcelli behind does give him a change of heart. The actor does a great job there portraying his role and presenting us with his predicament in the form of great and amazing dialogue all the way throughout the episode. But his reactions in general, his choices, his love for Jamie and Marcelli and Marcelli's love for him that sort of led her in the end to work herself on getting Jamie out of his imprisonment and back on board of the ship. The way she did it as well and the way she talked to Jamie in that scene was sort of very Claire-like. Number 6 though. Now in terms of new faces we got to see this week, Elias Pound was such a well portrayed and extremely interesting character. The dynamic between him and Claire from the very first moment and all the way till the very end of the episode was just amazing. The way it was done you could feel he treats her like a mentor and looks up to her even though they have only just met. And that was all part of the kind of beautiful drama that Outlander tends to offer us. There was also the loss of his friend and the pain it brought him which as well was very well acted. And you've got to applaud the actor there. Even though he's only been just introduced, the actor managed to make us feel his loss there with his facial expressions and his tears. And right then and there all you could just do is sympathize with him. But finally though there was his death in the arms of Claire which I think was the most saddening, most touching moment of the episode. And it was done just like in the novel even though I'm kind of a bit hazy on some of the details there. Number 7 though. The entire alcohol poisoning incident, Mrs. Johansson, the I keep do and the yes keep do and Claire cussing like a sailor, it was all a pretty funny sequence. But it also led Claire to finding the Portuguese flag, realizing one Harry Tompkins knew Jamie was Alexander Malcolm and has informed Captain Leonard once he saw him on board of the Artemis. And that in return led to Claire's encounter with the cook in the captain's chambers. Now that did present us with how far Claire has come, knowing how to get out of a terrible situation even if she had to threaten to lie. But all of that brings us to number 8. Meet Harry Tompkins, an ex-employee of Percival Turner and a man with a death wish. Now he is also the very same man who burnt the print shop down and attacked Ian and almost left him for dead even though Ian made sure the man is scarred for life, literally. And apparently a lot has happened off camera between then and now. Pretty much Barton's body was found and a warrant was issued for Jamie's arrest on the account of his murder. Now I did love how Claire will do anything for her family there. It is these kind of situations that make her character shine. And yes, what she did with Tompkins there was not playing fair but neither is the kind of enemy she's dealing with. Percival Turner wasn't playing fair, Barton wasn't and neither was Tompkins and he still isn't. So I'm kind of guessing anyone in her situation would have actually ended up doing the same. But that also left her with the pickle of Leonard's plan to use her as bait in Jamaica ensuring the capture of Jamie for the murder of Barton. But finally though, number 9. Now Annika Johansson was yet another interesting character on this episode. Love the grass conversation, which initially felt weird but actually ended up being her way of helping Claire escape. The woman's smile was just so kind and friendly and the way she decided to help Claire after she saved her husband, that was all interesting and done in a funny and well acted manner. And so Claire makes her escape on Grand Turks Island, only Leonard was onto her and knew she would try to make her escape on the account she's seen his notes and knows of his plan. But then Annika gives her another chance at escaping. Claire takes it and that is that. In a way though, with Mrs. Johansson, season 3 gave us yet another comic relief on this episode. And this kind of comic touch seems like something that has become an inherent trait of the season on almost every single episode, if not actually every single one of them. So was this a good episode? 
Well, it is one that started a little bit boring a few minutes in, then delivered an extremely touching arc before introducing us to a bit of danger and a few touches of comedy. But that was all just on Claire's end. On Jamie's end, on the other hand, there was danger, then there was a sequence that defined love from Fergus' perspective, gave us more of Marsley, and finally delivered Jamie's blessing to the young couple. So all in all, it was a really good episode. Not my favorite, but nonetheless a very good one. But that is all I've got on this episode for now. So let me know in the comments what you thought of the episode. Let me know as well what your favorite moments and sequences were. And if you like the content of this video, make sure you drop it a much appreciated like. And while you're at it, you can always subscribe and enable notifications as well. And until I see you next time, thank you all for watching and have a good one.